Hi YouTube, Holy Main here. Um, it's been a while since I have done a video and um, sorry for the way I look but I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> um, I felt like getting on and um, talking, just kind of sharing what's been going on with me. Uh, I guess it's been about two months since I've been on doing a video and that's because uh, not only have I been extremely busy, um, still going through some health issues. A few months back I talked about um, surgery I had to remove uh, some uterine fibroids that I had and um, they have since grown back. Uh, I guess I want to share just a little bit of history post-surgery um, from back in September of last year. I had a um, hysteroscopic resection um, which didn't require any um, evasive surgery um, and this is probably going to be graphic but majority of my viewers are women so it should be fine. Um, um, during the surgery um, I'm sorry, I went in vaginally. Uh, my doctor went in vaginally to remove the fibroids. And um, when I came out of surgery, I think I talked about this before. I'm sorry, I'm a little scattered. And that's also an effect of um, having the fibroids. You just kind of lose focus. But anyway, let me try to bring it back here. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Um, I had the surgery and she couldn't remove all of them. I only had one at the time. She couldn't remove it all because part of it was in the muscle of my uterus, which um, there are three locations fibroids can be located in the uterus and where mines were is what causes um, the most pain and the most heavy bleeding. So um, because she couldn't remove all of the fibroid. Obviously, she said that, you know, there's a possibility that they could grow back. Um, however, she tried to scrape away as much as she could and hoped that the area would, I guess, um, leave scar tissue, which would create a barrier so that it would not grow back. Well, post-surgery, um, I got my cycle, my first cycle post-surgery, and I still bled heavy still cramping. Um, my doctor told me that um, that's normal. I mean, just had surgery, your uterus is healing. Um, even though I, she scraped away some of the fibroids, some may pass through during my cycles. So I went through that for about three months. And um, like I said, periods were still heavy. So she put me on birth control pills. I have never had birth controls in my life. This was the first time. And um, I was on low, low estrogen. And I was on that for about seven months. And every month I had a different cycle. Some cycles were three to four days. Some were seven to eight. Some were somewhat heavy. Some were heavy and but always cramping and um, after you know the sixth or seventh month um, I was just like you know this isn't working <laughs> uh, let's try something else so she gave me low media 24 um, increased dosage of um, birth control pill and I was into the first pack three weeks, uh, four days, and I got my cycle. And it was the worst cycle I'd ever had. And this was very recent. This was in June. Worst cycle I ever had. Uh, I hemorrhaged three times. And the third time I hemorrhaged. Um, I started feeling lightheaded. I couldn't walk. I was nauseous. Nause I had 
I'm sorry, I was nauseous. And I just felt, okay, something's wrong. So I had my son drive me to the emergency room. And uh, my hemoglobin was at six. After, of course, they did blood work. And they said, you need a blood transfusion. And I was devastated. I mean, more, I guess more shock. Just, I didn't even think blood transfusion wouldn't even be a possibility even though like I felt my hemoglobin had dropped I just didn't even consider if your hemoglobin dropped <laughs> you're gonna need a blood transfusion like I didn't correlate the two at the time so when I needed it um, I had a little bit of anxiety but um, I just began to pray and um, just prayed that the blood of Jesus <laughs> was the blood that was going to be flowing through my veins during this transfusion and of course I had to be admitted in the hospital and I had two units of blood which only elevated my hemoglobin to 7.3 and then um, I was fine though so in hindsight I guess I probably had been functioning on maybe eight or nine and it was you know going down to six that what brought me to the emergency room um, so I'm sorry I'm tired my cycles on now <laughs> um, so after that um, I you know was discharged I was feeling fine even though they were like you're at seven but how do you feel I'm like I feel fine they had me walk around the hospital they were talking to me felt fine got discharged that next day I start bleeding again I didn't hemorrhage but I was bleeding really heavy I got nervous drove myself this time to the emergency room and I had them do my blood again and it was at 7.1 um, I was still bleeding, you know, while in the emergency room, which is such a, like this whole experience of having fibroids is just, it's such an isolating condition and you become withdrawn. It just affects your quality of life. You're always nervous of being too far away from home. I mean, I constantly carry like an arsenal of tampons and pads and medication and and wipes and you know just you know always wearing black trousers black capris always dark colors because I'm just have anxiety of having an accident uh, so when they discharged me from the hospital um, I was fine my period was still on my period lasts for about almost two weeks and um, it finally subsided um, the day of my son's graduation he graduated from high school <laughs> and I was so happy because I was just praying that it would let up before his graduation and it did and I was very happy um, unfortunately graduation was outside and it was hot that day and I was just so nervous that it was going to come back, but it didn't. And um, it had been off since, uh, so see, his graduation was on the 20th. And it's been off since today, which is, I think, the 12th. Today is the 12th, I think. So I had been without a period for like 30 days. Oh, and I forgot to say that I stopped taking the birth control pill. Um, my GYN, she never reached out to me. The ER doctor from the second time I went to the hospital got a hold of her, told her everything that had happened since the day before, and she just prescribed progesterone to stop the period because at the time I was scheduled to get the Mirena when, you know, I had did call her the first time to tell her that listen, it's not, the pills aren't working. So she's like, well, maybe we should try the Mirena. And meanwhile, when I had first went to this doctor, I did tell her, you know, hysterectomy isn't really an option for me. Um, that's not the route I want to go. So um, 
you know, in hindsight, you know, I guess she was going by my my needs, my wants, but I didn't feel like she was aggressive enough in like, you know, laying it out for me. Like, okay, listen, we had the surgery, it didn't work. I put you on the pill, it didn't work. I increased the dosage, it's not working. We need to think of some other alternatives instead of now, you know, setting me up to schedule a Mirena, which I had heard too many mixed reviews about. So after the whole episode in the hospital and when she did, she never called me that weekend and I stopped taking the pills, I canceled the Mirena appointment. And it wasn't until that Monday, because I was scheduled for the Mirena that Tuesday, that's when she calls me, you know, oh, hi, you know, um, I heard you were um, in the hospital. You had to go to the emergency room. I heard you had a blood transfusion. I heard you had to go back. And um, I, I, I see that you canceled your Mirena appointment. You know, give me a call. So, you know, I heard that the fibroids grew back. Yes, the fibroids grew back since the surgery. So give me a call and um, we can think of some more options. Well, at that point, I wanted nothing to do with her, N nothing at all. I felt like she couldn't reach out to me. She reached out to me about phone post-surgery, like like right after surgery. She really kept in contact with me to see how I was doing. And here I hemorrhaged three times, had a blood transfusion, and you don't call me until the day before because you saw I canceled my Mirena appointment. So at that point, I was like, I'm not going back to her. I stopped taking the pills, and I said I gotta empower. I gotta empower myself again and empower my body um, by um, listening to my body and not just filling my body with some medications to put a band-aid over the situation. Um, so that's what I did, and um, that's really the journey I've been going on uh, since then. So uh, right now, um, my job offer this service uh, through bestdoctors.com, which you get kind of a nurse uh, advocate that comes, not comes, but talks to you on the phone, and they kind of listen to the history of what you've been going through and really why you feel like you need a second opinion. It's a service to get second opinions. And I explain my situation, and what they do is, they find the top three to five percent doctors in your area where you can go and visit doctors and get second opinions and that's what I've been doing um, this has all been since last month <laughs> I've had a lot going on I'm moving <laughs> um, yeah I've got I've just I'm busy I'm really busy lately and um, so this is what I've been going through and why I've been away so um I went to a few doctors, got second opinions, and um, gave me my options. And um, it wasn't until I found one doctor where I just felt our, our spirit, I don't know, my spirit just connected with him. I felt, you know, God led me to this doctor. I, I had a list of doctors that I could go and choose from depending on how far I wanted to travel. And he was one of these doctors. And... Um, went to go visit him um, oh and this this bestdoctors.com um, not only did they send me the list of doctors top three to five percent they also will get your medical records for you on your behalf for free so they got all my medical records from my GYN every ultrasound I had everything so that when you go visit these doctors, you can come there with your records and say, this is what I've been going through. What do you suggest? Um, unfortunately, um, they're still waiting on some imaging, images that I've gotten in the past, and I don't have my records yet. And I felt like I've got to get moving. Because remember, I said my period stopped like June 20th, and I didn't know because I stopped the pill, I felt like I kind of altered you know my internal cycle so I didn't know when my period was gonna come I didn't know what to expect and I just I felt this urgency to find a doctor so um, whew, I'm sorry I'm tired <laughs> um, where was I 
So I found a doctor and had an ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound and a pelvic. And I had my follow-up appointment and he said, you have three large fibroids in your uterus. So obviously they did grow back since the surgery. My uterus was at, is at 12 inches and um, one of the fibroids is half the size and then there are two about a quarter of the size. And because they're all in the uterus, they're not on the outside, they're not on the um, outer walls, they're either in or in the inner walls. So um, he gave me my options and was very cut and dry. This is where the fibroids are. These are the options that you have you need to make a decision. And I'm at the point now, I'll be 43 this year. My son is out of high school. I don't plan on having any more kids. I'm getting a hysterectomy. I'm tired of bleeding. I don't want to bleed anymore. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to go through it. I don't want to keep having surgeries with the possibility of still having a cycle, even though it may or may not be a regular cycle. Like, I just don't want to take that chance. And um, I opted for having a hysterectomy. And the doctor that I'm with specializes in that um, procedure, um, having uh, the da Vinci hysterectomy where it's robotic and um, supposed to be less evasive. I mean it's major surgery regardless. It comes with its own risks. I'm aware of that. Um, I'm at peace with that. Um, at, at this point now, you know, I don't feel stressed or worried, but I'm sure probably that day just reflecting back when I had the surgery before just how overwhelming it can be and I'm sure this one will be even more so because it's really major surgery as opposed to the first one I had um, I'm just ready to have my quality of life back um, you know I couldn't go to church today because the flow was just too heavy I'm cramping I'm aching I'm fatigued and um, I just haven't felt normal for years and prayerfully um, I can get my quality of life back so that's where I'm at uh, my surgery is scheduled for the 21st so I ask for your prayers and um, I know I'm already healed in Jesus name I, I know he will be with me and uh, throughout this whole process, even though I went through the hemorrhaging and everything, I still remain at peace and I still praise God. I still know that he is a merciful God and he is a healer. And um, I know that I'm, I'm going to come out um, renewed and refreshed and just ready to live life again. But I just wanted to share what's been going on with me. And um, I've been watching many, many videos of women's stories. And um, it's been encouraging. And let's me you know that I'm not alone, even though I know I'm not alone because I have many, many friends who have had the surgery, either had the surgery or have dealt with fibroids. So it's a very common condition. Yeah. So, I'm doing a video. My bad. Okay. Anyway, so um, that's my story. If you all have any questions, uh, concerns, um, leave them below. I do go for my biopsy next week, and um, I have to call them tomorrow just to make sure that it can even be done. Uh, the biopsy is to just make sure that the cervix have no um, cancerous tissue and I'm, I'm going for a total hysterectomy, not a oophorectomy, which I'm learning. When people say total, they think they mean taking out everything, but it doesn't. It just means removing the uterus and the cervix. An oophorectomy is removing everything. 
the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the cervix. I'm keeping my ovaries. So, uh, yeah. And I had something else to say, but like I said, my focus sometimes is off. But if you have any questions, <laughs> I thank you guys for all your um, prayers and your well wishes. Or I ask for your prayers and well wishes. And um, I hope that this video helps. I'm, I'm actually going to try and give you guys some footage. Because I feel like I want to share. I want to share this. I want to share. I've watched so many videos of women's stories. And I'm telling you. It really helped me to hear their story and hear their process of whatever surgery they decided to do. And I feel like I want to share. Um, yeah. With the robotic surgery, like uh, the recovery time is supposed to be a little less. Um, I don't really want to give any weeks, but because I hear so many different stories, but um, less bleeding. I'm not getting the C-section, the bikini cut. They go in through the abdomen with several incisions through the abdomen. And the robotic instruments uh, performed and controlled by the surgeon in a council, I mean technology, <laughs> um, performs the surgery. He performs the surgery. He has complete control of the robot, but he is not at me. He's at a council, council and it's ergonomically um, performed so um, and, and he's able to really get a HD view of the surgery with more precision and um, yeah so I'm very hopeful about my surgery um, I was hoping <laughs> that my cycle would not come on between the time I decided to get the surgery, but alas, it's on. I don't quite know what that means. I did ask my doctor, what if my cycle's on? Can you still perform it? And he said, yes. So I'm just hoping my hemoglobin doesn't drop. I'm still taking my iron pills. Um, I go for my pre-admissions right after my, the day after my biopsy. So, you know, once I tell them I'm on my cycle, they'll, they'll really, I'm sure, want to check my blood levels and stuff before surgery okay so uh, that's it sorry for the long video um, maybe I'll break this up and maybe into two videos okay take care and be blessed bye